Good morning, everybody. I think we're ready to start now, and um, this is the last occasion on which I'll say welcome uh, to consider the Eighth Amendment. Um, as you know, um, we are agreeing um, the recommendations which will form the basis of the Assembly's final report on the topic of the Eighth Amendment for the Houses of the Oireachtas. Uh, yesterday, uh, the members voted on three ballots. Um, as, de as demonstrated yesterday, I think, um, the ballot paper is fairly complex. Not only that, uh, the balloting system is sequential, um, and that makes it somewhat complex and perhaps difficult to understand. It means that a later ballot, if it's going to happen, depends on an earlier ballot. But in any event, uh, we have, as it were, come to the end of the road, and today we're going to be dealing with um, ballot 4B. Now, just to recall briefly what happened yesterday, um, first of all, in ballot 1, the members voted by a majority that Article 40.3.3 should not be retained in full. Then, in ballot 2, the members voted by a majority that Article 40 Point three point three should be replaced or amended. And then, finally, in ballot three, the members decided that Article 40.3.3 should be replaced with a constitutional provision that explicitly authorises the Oireachtas to legislate to address termination of pregnancy, any rights of the unborn, and any rights of the pregnant woman. Um, that was the basis of the, on which the uh, last ballot was voted on, and really, uh, just to, to make it absolutely clear, in other words, what you have done is that you have recommended, in the words I um, used yesterday in explaining ballot three, you have recommended that the Oireachtas would have exclusive power to make law on these issues. So that's really, uh, you, you have to understand clearly that that is what uh, you uh, uh, voted on yesterday. Now, um, I'm going to go on now and explain ballot 4B. Um, again, this draft ballot was prepared by myself and the Secretariat with um, the assistance of the steering group, but after uh, a lot of consultation, if I may say it again, um, uh, with the expert advisory group, who uh, gave us invaluable assistance. Um, now, the text is, di is displayed on the screen. This is the text of Ballot 4B, which, as you'll see, is more even more complicated than the ballots you had yesterday. But the top of the paper outlines how we have reached this ballot, Ballot 4B. In Ballot 3, as I've already stated, this, the Assembly voted by a majority to amend the Constitution to explicitly authorise the Oireachtas to legislate. This ballot, the one we're dealing with now, 4B, will provide the recommendations of the uh, Citizens' Assembly to the Oireachtas about what should be included in the legislation. Specifically, it will provide recommendations about the reasons, if any, for which termination of pregnancy should be lawful in Ireland, as well as any gestational limits which should apply. Um, the suggested wording of the draft ballot paper seeks the recommendations of the citizens, the members of the Assembly, on eight reasons listed on the left-hand side of the table, and they're numbered one to seven. Now, numbers uh, one to eight, rather, numbers one to seven on the list um, 
they list possible reasons for which termination of pregnancy could be lawful in Ireland, while number eight provides for lawful termination of pregnancy without the requirement of any specific reason for termination. Now, to, just to look at the reasons in, in order. First of all, one is real and substantial risk to the life of the woman. And uh, number two is real and substantial risk to the life of the woman by su suicide. And those first two reasons, they represent the current law which is contained in the Protection of Life During Pregnancy Act 2013. So that, that is the law as it is now. Moving on then to number three, um, the reason, one reason suggested is serious risk to the physical health of the, of the woman. Um, number four, serious risk to the mental health of the woman. Number five, pregnancy as a result of rape. Number six, the unborn child has fetal abnormality that is likely to result in death before or shortly after birth. Number seven, the unborn child has a significant fetal abnormality that is not likely to result in death before or shortly after birth. And then finally, uh, number eight, available on request. In other words, um, uh, termination should, should be available uh, with no res uh, restrictions as to reasons. Um, so um, if, if you look at the right-hand side of the table, um, now, that is where you're supposed to indicate your recommendation, or there's an alternative, um, a, a preference uh, to state no opinion. And you do so by marking X opposite each reason. So um, we expect you to express a view on each reason, and you do that in, um, on, on the, the table on the right-hand side. Now, linked to these reasons, there are five columns which allow you to make recommendations on when, if ever, termination of pregnancy should be lawful for the various reasons set out on the left-hand side of the table. That's the, the, the numbers one to seven, and indeed eight as well. And then the choices presented in the columns I've just referred to are, first of all, A, you see A there, uh, never for this reason. Um, so so, so you're, you're voting against um, this particular reason um, justifying um, on, on a lawful basis a termination of a pregnancy. And then B, B1, B2 and B3 deal with the gestational limits, if any. And B1 refers to up to 12 weeks um, gestation only, B2 up to 22 weeks gestation only, and B3 with no restriction as to gestational age. And then finally, column C, the fifth column, um, it, it, that's another choice, and it is prefer not to state an opinion. And once again, as was the case yesterday in the ballots you dealt with yesterday, uh, this is included on the ballot paper to accommodate members who may not wish to express a view on change for all or any of the reasons for which it might be provided that termination is lawful. So you, 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 each member has that option to, to, to uh, mark X in column C if you don't want to express a view. Now, this is important. <coughs> Excuse me. Members should only select one of those options. While it is conceivable that there may be more than one option which reflects your point of view, it should be noted that any ballot paper with a mark in more than one column for a particular reason will be considered as to be a spoiled vote and therefore will not be counted. So I hope every, 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 everybody is clear on that. It is consistent with the, the explanation we gave in relation to what was a spoiled vote yesterday. So just to repeat, um, one X um, opposite each reason. One X opposite each reason. I deal briefly now with the uh, reporting of um, the results of this ballot. Um, and I'm d d doing this at this stage, um, not only to give you some information, but to aid your comprehension as to the implications 
of uh, your votes. Um, given the nature of the ballot and the number of questions being asked, reporting will necessarily be more complex. <coughs> Excuse me. A sample results sheet um, for this ballot is provided on the screen behind me and you can all see it. Once again, it will specify the number of citizens eligible to vote and the number of citizens who voted, as was the case yesterday. Effectively, eight separate recommendations are being made on this ballot paper. You will be casting a separate individual vote on each of the eight reasons listed. Each one of the reasons will be reported, will be reported on separately when I announce the results later this morning. A further point must be made clear. As you will see, the columns have also been alphabetized, and I've mentioned A, B1, B2, B3, and C previously. So I'm about to explain what, what this is about. Um, the first column, uh, which is listed A, is uh, never for this reason. So if you, if you, if you, if you don't want uh, a particular reason to uh, be a basis for rendering a termination lawful, you put your X in, in that box. The middle three, up to 12 weeks gestation only, up to 22 weeks gestation only, and with no uh, restriction as to gestational age, we've listed those B1, B2, and B3. And uh, the last column is listed C, and that's prefer not to state uh, an opinion. In other words, if you're, making, if, if you're not making a recommendation, uh, you, you put the X in box C. Now, I want to just, just explain the position insofar as um, is necessary at this stage um, in relation to the three middle um, columns, B1, B2, and B3. Those three have been grouped together in order to facilitate reporting of the results of the voting. Each option listed under B permits the termination of pregnancy up to certain, if any, gestational limits. As such, these will be added together in the initial reporting because collectively they represent all votes cast as to gestational limits on the termination of pregnancy or no gestational limit. In reporting, the votes cast in each option listed under B will then be broken down to show how the citizens have voted in relation to um, gestational limits or none. Once again, I want to make clear how the majority vote of the Assembly will be determined here. Full details of this are given in the note you got yesterday, the note on voting, um, and um, it, that note for, for members of the public is also available online. In relation to this ballot, a majority for each individual recommendation will be determined in the initial reporting by reference to the votes cast for recommendations B1, B2 and B3 combined. Um, in respect of any of the eight reasons, um, there is, sorry, if in respect of any of the eight reasons, there is um, equality of voting there, um, on the recommendations, the chair will have a casting vote as provided for in the resolution of the Oireachtas under which we're performing this task. Now, the slide uh, now depicts how this will be, um, yeah, yeah, yeah how, how this will be displayed. Can you all see that? And I hope, I ho I hope it's clear. If not, you can ask some questions in relation to it. Anyway, that concludes the description of Ballot B. And um, we're now going to go into private session and you will discuss the, uh, that ballot, the complex one. Uh, if, uh, I, should, I should have said 4B. You will discuss that um, in, in round table format. And um, you will uh, prepare any questions you have. Um, and um, as was the case yesterday, we would be grateful if you would write the questions out in duplicate. You can keep one uh, form format and then give the other um, to the secretariat who will pass it on to the expert advisory group. And as soon as you have a question formulated, uh, please make it available. So um, this is a complex 
um, a ballot process. There's no doubt about it. And um, I think we, we're allowing 45 minutes, I think, for the round table. And then we will have um, the um, Q&A session. Uh, and we'll hear your views on the ballot and any amendments you want to make. So um, we, we'll um, resume at 10.30. Thank you very much.